in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 21. Brother Justin told me this morning, this church that's not uh, going to be here, so we'll be in the children's church. Amen. Samuel 21, and I want to read verse number 19. I'll be reading other verses. Uh, but verse number 19. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, and Elohim, the son of uh, Jerogor, the Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. Uh, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. If you're reading there in the King James, you'll see that there's some words that are italicized. And uh, if you took away the italicized words, you would basically see that it says the Bethlehemite Goliath, uh, the, the Gittite. You would find that, uh, that he was killed. And so you'll find that David is, this is not where David is, that young boy in his life. Uh, where he's fighting Goliath as being that, that teenage boy, but he's seeing another Goliath later on in his life. In fact, in, in the latter part, we'll, we'll talk more about that in, in a little bit. Uh, but but the, uh, here it is, not the original Goliath, another Goliath that he's fighting and facing. And uh, David is an elderly man now. Uh, Goliath came once in David's life, but we find it. Sister Alice, Alice Goliath comes again. And so I think that there's something to be said about that, uh, that we are going to fight some battles in life, and there's going to be some big battles. There's going to be big battles when we're young, but there's going to be big battles when we're older. So what is that life and the battles, the difficulties that we go through? Everybody will face difficulties. We won't be exempt from it. And they're going to come no matter what age in life we are. But there are some practical things this morning that we can learn about this David and uh, him fighting Goliath again. If you go back to the original and the Hebrew, David's name is really pronounced, uh, pronounced David. Uh, it's not the David that we know about, but David here this morning, it means the beloved. How can the beloved be going through difficult times? If we love someone, we try to shield them from that, don't we? We want to shield our children from things, our spouse from things, our parents from things. Those that we love, we want to shield. And so here was David, and we think about him. He's the young shepherd boy who is anointed by Samuel to be the king of Israel. Uh, he was born in Israel. We, we look at the word of God, and we know some things about David, Brother Eli. He comes on the scene, Brother Dennis, being a young boy, a young man. And we see him being a handsome man. And, uh, we, the word of God says that he's ruddy. What does that mean? That word ruddy means that he's this red-haired uh, 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 young man who comes on the scene and, and uh, 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 he, is, he is a lot of his life is shown to us but the greatest thing that we learn about is that he kills Goliath. All of us probably know about that, that David kills Goliath. And uh, who can forget the day when David is sent from his father to take food to his brothers who are in the army. And he comes to the army and he brings food to his brothers and he finds that the Philistines are coming against Israel. And, 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 and there's this great big Philistine who's head and shoulders above all the rest and his name is Goliath. And he's making fun of Israel, the army of Israel. And David, he's bringing some food for his brothers. But what he, he discovers uh, that this this giant of a man is making a mockery out of his country. And not out of his country, but out of his God. And it disturbs David. And, and, and he says, I'm going to fight against him. And so we find that, 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 that the king wants to give him armor to wear, but David is too small for the armor. He's not proved it. He's not ever fought with this armor. So he says, I, I don't want it. I'm going to armor myself with the word of God and the promises of God. And he goes and he picks those stones up and uh, he comes walking out to the Philistines and there is Goliath. Can you imagine Goliath? <laughs> this 
just funny and he's mad and he's stomping and he's snorting all in the same time because here is this young lad going to fight against them. He is a big, bad warrior. And he laughs. Why would they send a teenage boy out to fight? But we know that David, wearing the armor of God, we know more so from, from the, the, the New Testament, uh, his sword was what was the tongue that he had in his mouth. Uh, it was it was the word of God. You come against me with spear and sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. And, and so we know that, that, that he hits Goliath and he falls. He takes his head off and, and, and he feeds his, 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 his body to, 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 to animals. And so this, this David, that's the beloved David, who we know from yesterday, we see him now in a today fighting a different giant. He, he knew what it was like to be underneath the paw of, of, of the lion. He knew what it was like to be in the mouth of the bear. Amen. And, and have victory. And so here it is. That, that David, he kills the first Goliath only as a team. Amen. And then he would be crowned king. The first king of Israel would be Saul. Giving you a little information here. Saul did not like David. And when he was anointed to be king... It was still many years later, uh, uh, I think it was third, uh, when David was about 30 years of age, he was crowned king of Judah, and then as they came together, then he became king, and he reigned for 33 years over this Bethlehem area. And so sometimes we have to learn to wait on the promises of God, don't we? Did God ever promise you something? And you say, God, you spoke to my heart that you're going to answer this. Here David is as a teenager, anointed to be king. And he never really becomes king for many years later, but he held on to the promises of God. Sometimes when you're praying, God is going to speak something to your heart. Or you're reading the Word of God and God's going to speak something to your heart. And you know the promise is. And you're going to have to hold on to that promise even though you fight some your lives. Even though people mistreat you, Saul was terrible to them. I think about I think about all the things about Saul's life and, and how terrible that, 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 he, that he was to David. And I think about this, that even his best friend dies with, with, with Saul. What's that like to go through the emotions of having a colleague die? We know what it's like to have someone older than us die who we expect to die. But when one of our colleagues dies and someone who's a close companion of ours dies, we feel all the emotion of that, don't we? So here's David. He's holding on to the promises of God. Saul has been mean to him. He loses his best friend. He's running like a fugitive. He aligns himself the worst of the worst, but he brings up the best of them. But David is still holding to the promise of God that God is going to bring about what God has promised to him. Are some of you holding to a promise? Maybe there's things in your life, amen, things spiritually in your life, things physically in your life, things emotionally in your life. I want to encourage you right here, right now. There may be some Goliaths that you'll face, but hold on to the promises of God because what God has spoken, uh, we, we, we look at Habakkuk chapter number 3, the Word of God says, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but it shall speak and it shall not lie. Amen. Hold on to the promises of God. God will bring the pass. And so here it is. That David then later, after killing Goliath, he, he, he's running like a fugitive, the loss of his friend. We find that, 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 that he is given the kingdom from the Nile to the river to the Euphrates River, and, and he reigns. We find that, that, that his kingdom, he was born in Bethlehem, and his kingdom would continue on even through the birth of a baby named Jesus in Bethlehem, who would be born a king. Let me get back to our text. We find that David, some of you folks that's older in life, listen to me. We find that David in his life is closer to the sunset than when he is the sunrise. And now he's facing a giant. Not what we want, not what we like. And we find that, that he's facing this, this, this giant. And maybe he's reflective back of a time when he's met the giant Goliath in his youth. And he thinks about those smooth stones. 
He thinks about five. Some have called them Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. Some have uh, has called them Grace, G-R-A-C-E. But he only needed one, one of those stones to conquer the giant. But I need to tell you, there's four more giants that he needs to conquer in his life. And was God speaking something to him? I gave you five stones, David. You're going to conquer Goliath this time. But there's going to be four more giants that you're going to need to conquer in your life. And I've given you ammunition to conquer them. Whatever we may be up against, whatever we may in the future be up against, God has given us all the ammunition and everything that we need to conquer the giants. Amen. If we will just look at the resources that He's provided for us. Amen. It's like deja vu. Uh, David wakes up and here's another giant. So let's look at this. Let's, let's look at some points from this. Amen. Let's move on. And my next thought is this. That sometimes giants reappear. Any of you ever fight a battle and you think it's over and now all of a sudden you fight a battle that's very similar to that again? You thought it was done. You thought it was over. He had beheaded the enemy. Now the, but, but sometimes problems just have a way of reappearing. The first Goliath appears. Amen. And now we find that, that there's another Goliath that's appearing and he appears in a pack of four. Any of you ever know anything about Hercules? In mythology, and he cuts the head off the serpent. What does it do? It grows back double head again. You know, and so here it is that, 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 that David is fighting another giant. But this time it's not just one, it's four he's going to be fighting. Wow, it's crazy. <coughs> Jesus said this He said, if the house is clean and, 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 and the enemy comes back, he comes back and invites seven more. So, it's multiplied. The, the enemy is coming against David times four. Anybody in this congregation ever fight a giant and conquer it? To turn around and feel like now you have a giant that comes back in force? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Some of you are waving your hands. Some of you are saying, yeah, I understand that. And the problems of yesteryear seem like gigantic and big, but now today's problems, they seem like they come in force. They're bigger. They're greater. You know, sometimes, do, do, do any of you remember uh, uh, modern history? And looking back, World War I was supposed to give us solutions, but, but, but then broke away to World War II. And then we think about uh, the Iraq War, and then it broke away to, 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 to Desert Storm. Uh, sometimes it just has a way of breaking through. And David, uh, here in his golden years, he wasn't departing from the problems of life. Are any of you senior saints out there aware that problems doesn't depart when you get to the growing years? <laughs> Some of you out there, maybe because of where you are in life dealing with folks, I deal with a lot of folks, and I hear this often said to me, the golden years aren't as golden as what I thought they were. So I'm enjoying working. <laughs> We'll wait for retirement because it probably brings new problems, right? And so here it is. Any of you ever, uh, 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 anybody in here ever had chicken pox? I know before Veramax came along, you know, uh, uh, chicken pox was a, a, a big thing. And so some of you may be thinking about chicken pox, but most of you had them when you were very, very young. And uh, uh, so you kind of manage your way through that. And some of you may not even remember. Uh, I had to have a tire drawn up. My mom don't even remember me having them. So I, I must have had a really good experience with my chicken pox. And so, but how many of you are aware that in your, in your older years that there's another virus that is like the chicken pox that they say comes from the chicken pox that lies dormant on, 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 on the nerve and all of a sudden stress or sickness or fatigue can bring this out and it comes out as something called shingles. And uh, I, 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 I've dealt with some folks that, that, that have had shingles and uh, chicken pox seem to be for the kids and shingles for the older ones. But children, it seems like the chicken pox lasts a little while and is gone. But shingles seems to tear it. <laughs> some folks can carry them for months or years. It's kind of like David with his Goliath. He gets rid of the one, but in his golden years, it seems to come back. It's fierce. It's terrible. 
And so here it is that Goliath, <coughs> almost like he's resurrected, he comes from a, a different name this time, but he comes stronger. And so old enemies call for new strategies. David, when he was fighting Goliath, he doesn't go to his, his, his childhood slingshot to fight this Goliath. His, his strategies are different. And uh, he doesn't look for those remaining four stones. There are new strategies. It's interesting. In chapter in verse number 12, for the verse, of, verse number 14, the Bible says, And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan from the from his son from his son from the men of uh, Jabesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the streets of Beth Shahat where the Philistines had hanged them, when the Philistines had slain Saul and Gibeah. And he brought them up against the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of them that, that were hanged, and the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried, and they in the country of Benjamin and Zelah in the sepulcher of Kadesh uh, his father. And, and they performed all that the king commanded after that God was entreated for the land. Here it is that David says this. He says, I'm burying my yesterdays. Sometimes our problems in life, the best thing that we can do is bury our yesterdays. It's interesting that he buries the bones of, 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 of Saul and Jonathan. Every memory of, of Saul was bad memories because he was mean and he was vindictive to, to, to David. But his memories of Jonathan were very sweet. This was his, his youth, uh, his friend of his youthfulness. Uh, they, 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 they learned together. Uh, they enjoyed life together. They seen challenges of life together. They had each other's backs. And so here it is. He buried the bones of painful memories, but also of pleasant memories and everything associated with them. Can I tell you that if we are going to fight our battles of today, we have to bury all of our hurts. If it happened yesterday, leave it in yesterday. Amen. If it was good times in yesterday, enjoy the moment, but leave it there and know that we've got to engage in today's battle. Uh, holding on to those things are only hurtful and hindrances to us. God help us to forget about yesterday and engage in the battle of today. Amen. Understanding that maybe they did hurt me, but bury it. Listen to what they said about me. Bury it. Amen. Uh, look at all this hard work and education that I had, but I'm still fighting this battle. Bury it. Amen. Uh, look at this well-stocked uh, resume that I have. Bury it. It doesn't help you in your battle. Engage in today. If you think that you're ever going to be done learning in life, and you have misread life, and you've misread God's Word, and, and, and you're far from the mark, we're all going to learn. Engage in the battle. Good times and bad times from yesterday won't help us in today's battle. Engage in it. And so... He buries yesterday. But he does something that's amazing. He looks for new strategies. He looks for new strategies. <coughs> and you know what David did? He had four giants to fight, Brother Josh. He realized that he was youthful. It was all he could do, Michelle, to fight the one giant in his youth. But now today, Sister Rachel... He has four and he's older. He doesn't have the stamina. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't have the vitality that he had yesterday. So what's he going to do, Brother David? There's a new strategy. But I know my nephew. I know some young men who's able to fight the battle for me. I don't need to kill the giants. I need to align myself with some folks who can fight the battle for me. Do you know what happens in our life too many times? We live our life in silos. 
We live to ourselves. We think to ourselves. We engage in life to ourselves. We pray our own prayers without ever asking others to bear our burdens, to pray with us. We don't ever ask for advice from godly people. But David knew that there were four men who he could trust. They were tried. They were proven. They were true. And he aligned himself with them. Sometimes in our life when we go through struggles, amen, it's good to have someone that will partner in prayer with us. It's good to have someone who has some vitality and strength in the things of God who can encourage us. Align yourself with folks who love you and will fight the battle for you. We need folks that will pray. We need folks that will encourage. We need folks that will lift us up and give us help in the battle that we fight. David had to do something. He had to accept change. Do you know what? Life is full of change. I say this very, very often, but God is a God who's on the move. Yeah. Amen. He's not living in yesterday. He's not stuck in Bible times. He's not stuck in some church age uh, where maybe they were having a revival. God is still God in this generation. Amen. But we may need to, to, to change some of our thinking. In the old way sometimes doesn't work in today's battle. It's interesting, as you get older, you can talk to some pastors that, that, that have some wisdom. One man told me, he said, you know, I pastored for a short time. He said, and after a season of being off, I went back to pastoring. He said, but I couldn't do it. He said, because I tried to do things by the old way, and it just doesn't work. Not changing the gospel, not changing the word of God, not watering it down, but just learning to realize. Sometimes we need to accept change. And that's what David did. He engaged and aligned himself with folks that could fight the battle and accepted change. David accepted the fact that he had changed and also the enemy had changed. I'm not the enemy that can fight the battle. The enemy is back, and he's back worse than ever. So I need to align myself and involve others. Yeah. Involving others is so important. You know, in our lives, God has given us a resource in this church. And that's one another. I wonder if we utilize that resource that God has given us. Or we live on yesterday and say, I did it yesterday, I can do it today. The enemy's not the same as yesterday. And you and I are the same as yesterday. So we need to involve others. There's power that can be found in the words of others. Power to be able to spread the gospel, to win the victory, to ignite passion for revival involving others. Victory can still be found even over old enemies. If I may move to my next, next thought that I can bring everything together. I look at David's life and I admire David. Do I approve of everything David did in his life? Absolutely not. David did some crazy things. But I love this man and all the pictures that I see. Brother David, I see him being this guy on this harp playing. And he's writing these love songs. I mean, it's crazy, right? And in the next phase, I see him with this do-rag around his hat. And he's this mighty warrior. I mean, he's this this guy who's taken down the enemy that's in his way and he doesn't mind to do it. He's this guy who is a father. He's this guy who has passion for women that's out of control, but he finds a line and he finds rightness with God. But in the middle of all these things, let's be real, folks. Let's be real. Let's not sit here honest, uh, un 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 honest with ourselves and acting past. We all have our struggles in life. We all have our weaknesses in life. And David is a model of a man with weaknesses and strengths. But when it comes to the end of life, David has mastered, amen, taking care of his weaknesses. And he has majored on taking care of those things that have been his strength. 
I look at his life and this man who is so strong, he's a mighty warrior, he's a man who sees blood and a blood spill, but I see him broken hearted when he looks at the baby that he had with Bathsheba and he won't eat, he won't shave, he won't wash, he won't do anything because David has, has, has seen the lives of others killed, but for the first time he's watching his own flesh and blood die before his eyes. Amen. But he realizes something when that baby dies. He says, I, I, that baby can't come to me anymore, but I can go to that baby. And so his lifestyle switches and he makes sure that everything that he does aligns with getting to see that child someday in eternity. Brother and sister, when we live life, we learn to see our flesh die. We say no to the things that are ungodly. No to the things that don't honor God in, in whatever way. And as we watch our flesh die, we gain wisdom in our life. Amen. And that we can conquer any child, even when they come a, a multiplied times four. Amen. Even though we are weak and we are chased, we learn to change the way we fight our enemies. Maybe some of you are engaged in battles this morning. And maybe some of them are battles like the last that you faced in your younger year and thought that you conquered. And now here they are raising their head up again. Maybe you need to change the way you're fighting the enemy. Maybe you need to realize that you can't do it on your own. That you need to employ some help of God. <coughs> and maybe you need to realize it's time to change my strategy. Because I've changed and the enemy's changed. I can't use the same old tactics. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano this morning, one thing that I know that is common for all of us is that we face battles. Every one of us will face battles. We've had some big victories in our past. We've had some pretty bitter moments in our past as well. Things where folks have hurt us. But the only way we're ever really going to face is by putting the past in the past. And say, God, I'm going to conquer this enemy. I've changed, and the enemy's changed. Give me wisdom and new strategies. Give me grace. Father, speak to me about the right people that I need to put around me that will fight and conquer the enemy for me. We have some great folks in this church. Some great folks who can offer some wisdom and some strategies we've never used before. If we will utilize that, they can fight our enemy flesh too. It's all through the grace of God. But the enemy is real. Some of you may feel discouraged and beat up. Amen. God is here to give you victory. I said sometimes we need to employ new strategies. You know, the family structure was a lot different 50, 75 years ago. Society was a lot different. Agree? So are we going to use the strategies of 50, 75 years ago? No. No. We're going to use the strategies that God gives us in today's battle to engage and win. So whatever your battle, you're not the same as yesterday. Your enemy's not the same as yesterday. It's time for new strategies. It's time to gain just regrouping and gathering and invite others in to help fight the battles with us. And know that in the end, God will give us the victory. I don't know, I'm at a season in my life where I'm close to sunset, distance from sunrise. I don't know how I, I mean, I pray God gives me maybe a little ahead. But my focus is way more on how well that I do today than it's ever been. Because I want to finish well.
Do I have some folks that says, I want to finish my two pastor? I want to fight the enemy with new strategies. I want to conquer. I want to win. I want to be victorious in Jesus. If that's you, would you go there into a place of prayer and find a place of commitment of fighting the enemy this morning?